Gobi now, where Salim Amin, who is the man in charge of uh, A24 Media, that produces a number of uh, television programs for different organizations. He's a journalist, he's a broadcast journalist. Uh, let's speak with Salim. Salim, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Cody. I'm fine. Great to have you on Channel Television Live here in Nigeria and around the world. First, let's ask, what is the situation in Nairobi now? Have the results been announced? The results have been uh, uh, they've been out for a while, for a few hours now. But the um, the IEBC, the uh, the electoral body, uh, the electoral commission, has not um, officially announced a, a winner yet. Um, although from the numbers that have been released, it looks like Uhuru Kenyatta is, uh, is the next president of Kenya. Okay, so the expectation is that um, Uhuru Kenyatta has won, but what do you expect will happen? Because some people have started making conjectures and uh, adding two and two together in terms of the body language of Raila Odinga, that he will probably go to court if he loses. Um, I think that's a very good chance because the, the, um, the, there have been a number of irregularities on the counting. Uh, there was an electronic counting that, uh, that, that began the process on Monday and then that failed on uh, Wednesday and they started manually counting. So there have been a number of different things that have gone wrong. Um, and he, while, while Uru Kenyatta, you know, beat Raila by almost 800,000 votes, uh, the difference for him to get his 50% um, of the electoral was only 4,000 votes. So 4,000 votes out of a total of 12.5 million votes cast is not a lot of votes. So I suspect that uh, Rilo Odinga will go to court and ask for a recount of the votes in order to see if that 4,000 votes, um, of those 4,000 votes can be can be moved in some way to deny Uhuru his 50% and to take this to a runoff. Uh, speaking with some friends uh, who are in Nairobi this morning, I understand some people are already out on the street celebrating. What are the chances that this might turn out to be fairly dangerous for Kenyans if the result is announced and the body language of one of the uh, uh, candidates is that uh, we're not accepting this. Is there any chance of this breaking into any kind of violence? Uh, well, we've seen it happen before, Tyree, as, as you recall from 2008. We've seen it happen, and um, I'm not discounting it. So far, everything is quite peaceful. People have been celebrating. Um, some people have been protesting, but peacefully protesting. There hasn't been any incidences of violence. Uh, to date, but uh, you know, if they announce all of a sudden that it is a runoff and and uh, with a mistake in the counting, then you know this could turn nasty very very quickly. But um, it's very, you know, I'm sure there will be a court process, which is 14 days. Um, so I think the swearing in will be delayed for a little while. Um, but if they do find an anomaly on on the both on the counting, then uh, then we could be in for a runoff, and in which case it will turn really nasty. I think. Okay, Salim, please tell us. Um, we've got our own INEC uh, members of staff and commissioners who are here and an independent observer who's being in Nairobi. Are there reports of any malpractices apart from the issue of problems with counting and use of technology? Um, yeah, there was, there obviously, I mean, the IEDC here spent um, an enormous amount of money in, in this whole electronic uh, relaying of, 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 of votes to, to the main centers. Uh, now their server crashed or there's had some problem or some virus. Um, so that obviously leads to a lot of allegations of, of some sort of tampering. Now nobody knows whether that's true or not. Um, I personally think the IDC has done a, a really good job under an enormous amount of pressure to, to try and, and, and temper expectations, to resolve problems, to admit when there have been problems, because that's often what, what, what they don't do is admit that there's a problem. They've come out straight and said, we've got problems, but these are the solutions that we're implementing. So I think they've tried really, really hard to make this as transparent a, a process as possible. They, they resorted to the manual counting 
which really didn't show a difference in the results uh, per se. In the in the electronic counting, Uhuru was still leading by six or seven hundred thousand votes when, when they had to stop it, and he's ended up winning by by seven eight hundred thousand votes. It's a annual cap, so. Um, so this hasn't been, uh, I don't think it's been, a, it's been a flawed exercise, it's just been a long exercise. And uh, we have to commend the, the Kenyans for the amount of patience that they've shown waiting for these results. Okay, what would you put it down to the success that you've experienced as a result of the number of people that are being out to vote? Because we have pictures here brought by Mike Higini, uh, who works for the INEC, who's an INEC commissioner here. In terms of the turnout, what would you put it down to? Oh, I think there was a huge amount of, of, um, uh, of, of hope that the Kenyans wanted to see some change. This is the, 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 the we're electing a completely new president. In 2007, there was an incumbent running. Now it's a completely new president. There's been a massive amount of campaigning going on by, by all the candidates. Um, and there's been a lot of people pushing people to go out and vote and just actually exercise their rights. And I think, again, it was, a, it was a wonderful sight to see, you know, miles and miles of lines of people waiting patiently, laughing, talking to each other, joking. Um, but it was, you know, in the intense heat, standing for 16, 17 hours to cast their vote. And it, it really was a, a wonderful sight. And I think the Kenyans feel, you know, vindicated about what happened five years ago. Um, that, that their vote will really count this time, and, and I'm hoping that that's going to be the case. Okay, well, uh, final word, final question for you, Salim. In, in terms of way forward now, why would a sitting uh, leader like Raila Odinga be losing out in this election? What was it he missed out on in terms of his campaign? What was missing? How could Uhuru come and win this election in this way? Very quickly, Salim, because we've got to wrap up now. Sorry, I didn't hear the question, uh, Kari, you, you, I lost you. Okay, I was just asking that what was the missing element for Raila Odinga? Because one would expect that the power of incumbency would enable him win this election comfortably. What was the missing element in his campaign that made it such that it seems Uhuru is almost running away with it? I just think that he wasn't as organized in his campaign as, as, as Uhuru was, and I think Uhuru obviously put uh, a lot more money into it, and there was a lot more organization, a lot more, um, uh, a lot more uh, campaigning done by the Jubilee Alliance as opposed to the Court Alliance, and I think a lot of that boiled down to, to basic budgets and, and, and the fact that Uhuru had more finance available to him. Salim Amin, A24 Media CEO, thank you very much.